I remade Bogart's Escape by Ghost Pit Studios. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Meet Ghostbit Studios, aka Alberto Zapata. Ghostbit has a niche page, a YouTube channel, and a Twitter. And one day, he dropped me a message to say he would like to take part in this challenge. In the original game, you play as a little frog trying to get out of this prison, crawling with these little kind of weird enemy things with floppy hairdos. You've got enemies that take more damage, moving platforms, obstacles, there's a power up. If you die, you get put back to the beginning. And then when you get to the end, you can enter the door and that's where you win. I have fancied up some of the artwork. I've created some variety in the tiles. So I've got, if we look over in my objects, in my background blocks, I've got all of these different background blocks, which are all tile backgrounds. My basic is just this one here with a couple of little highlights and shadows. And that's this one, the majority of all of what you see in terms of the brick. But um, I wanted to create kind of eight uh, tapered edges here so you can see how the shadow goes around a corner. So I've got different blocks like left edge and right edge. And I've just used these to build a map which is somewhat similar to the original where you go down to the right, back to the left, there's a little secret power up that you can get which will enable you to blast through. I chose not to put in the tree um, I just went for these blocks. I just wanted to keep it consistent. I didn't really feel that a tree would be in a kind of dungeon castle, so I already had these other little blocks anyway for variety, so I thought why not just make these the ones that you can destroy. And in the original game you get put, you get given a projectile from the start so you can kill these things, but I haven't done that in the remake. I've got the signs. I didn't want to use text too much in the game. Um, I wanted the instructions to be built into the game using the artwork. So I've got this sign here which has seven frames and on each individual frame you've got different instructions. I've added in a different enemy type in terms of these little traps here. This is uh, an arrow shooter. Uh, it's just a square sprite 16 by 16 and I've just put a fancy little design on it with a color scheme that fits the overall palette. And all I do is every 1.5 seconds is I spawn an arrow and I shoot it down to the ground. And then I've created this little sprite here, which is just three arrows, nothing fancy. And I've just put them underneath the traps there so you can see um, that certain arrows have stuck in the ground. Every one that shoots doesn't get stuck in the ground. It destroys itself when it hits the ground, but it gives a nice aesthetic look as if arrows have kind of stuck in there from previous shots. Obviously spikes, um, every platformer needs spikes and I've tried to stay true to the design in terms of the moving platforms here. Um, I've given, given uh, the game two enemies, these little kind of turnip style looking enemies. It's just a four frame animation cycle and then the kind of hair bobs up and down. And what I've done with these enemies is I put them in families. So if you come over in here to the right, I've put them both in an enemy's family and then I've given the enemy's family the platform behavior. Um, just for simplicity purposes really because they'd effectively be the same thing. They'd have the same logic applied to them and they'd be doing exactly the same thing. So by putting them in a family, I was able just to then reference the family group rather than looking at each individual one and doubling up some of the events. There are some power-ups in the game. You can collect these little heart containers. So that's it in terms of the artwork. It's been pretty simple. There's not too many different sprites that I've created, mainly just different variations of those blocks that I showed you. Got a few global variables at the top which control the speed, whether or not we have firepower, whether or not the game is over, how much life the frog has and how much maximum life the frog has. Because remember we can pick up those heart containers which will add one to the maximum health. I've got a group that controls the player movement and shooting which come under player controls and then the movement system is very very simply W, A, S and D. I've added in a crouch function so the ability to crouch under um, certain lower objects and then with the shooting that's all tied into that boolean variable which is firepower so if firepower is true then when we press the space bar as long as we're not dead hurt or already shooting then we can shoot and then if we're on frame two of the shooting animation which is the frame where his mouth is open that's when we're going to spawn the fireball we're not going to just spawn it when we press space bar because if we double click into the frog and we go to the shoot animation 
the first frame is him kind of making a big bulge in his mouth as if he's kind of summoning up the fireball and then frame one is when it opens and then frame two is when he's blowing it so this is when the fireball appears the animations are tied to the state of the frog so by changing the state i can then simply assign a separate animation to the actual state that the frog is in playing that specific animation and whatever sound effects need be the power-ups are all one sprite so if I go over and show you the fireball power up, we've got fireball on frame zero, we've got the heart container on frame one, and we've got the double jump, which is supposed to be a frog jumping off the ground. I don't know if that's too clear. Then I've got the arrow traps in their own block. Now I set a 1.5 second condition if the arrow traps are on screen to play these sound effects, because otherwise what would happen is these arrow traps would be firing off and then you'd hear the sound effect of the arrow shooting and landing but you wouldn't see the arrow trap on screen so it would be a bit confusing so I've set that to trigger only if those are in view by the player and then I've set a loop here so system loop for each arrow trap because remember we've got six of them in the game then you're going to create an arrow, put it on the player layer, spawn it in at the arrow trap X and Y positions and then we've got a few various conditions that, that that's that tell the system what to do if the arrow hits the blocks or whether he hits the frog and if he hits the frog when we're not dead then we call this frog hurt function and that frog hurt function is simply just a camera shake a sound effect change the state of the frog to hurt change the boolean on the frog of hurt to true subtract one from the hp and then set the hurt back to false and then what that looks like if we double click on the frog is we've got this little animation and it's simply just i've just copy and pasted frames from the idle and I put them in here, but I've made the first two red and then gone back to green. So he flashes red for a second and then back to green. And it gives a visual representation that the player's been hurt. And we trigger that function whenever we hit these enemies, whenever the arrows hit us. Um, and if we hit the spikes, that's an instant game over. So there is no lose one HP. If you hit the spikes, it kills you completely because spikes are the most deadly enemy in all platform games ever created. And then if we are dead, we if the uh, Boolean instance variable on the frog is set to dead, which is true, then we trigger once the fade out function which brings in the black screen, which is the nice transition. We set game over to true. We turn the firepower off because you're going to lose everything that you've done um, as per the original game. And we're going to set the state of the frog to death, which will then play the death animation. We will wait one second, stop everything, and then go to the lose screen, which is this one here. And then that little death animation is just with the stars buzzing around his head with his little eyes crossed out. If we manage to reach the end of the level, we're going to overlap this little sprite here that I've called goal. And if we do overlap that, we call in the fade out function, which makes the screen black. We set game over back to true because we've won. We stop all the sound effects and we go to the win screen. If you want to go through the event sheets, get all the sprites and the artwork that I've made along with all the sound effects and all the music which I've taken from my Fairy Tale Garden music pack, there's a link in the description if you want to get that. If you want to download this game pack, it will be available on itch for a small fee and you get access to all of the event sheets, all of the artwork and all of the music that I've used in this remake. If you are a Patreon of mine, you'll get all this free of charge when I upload it to the Patreon site and you can just download it pick it apart, reuse it, copy, paste it, modify it, whatever you like, and use it to make your own bases for a platform game, if that's what you want to do. As always, before we finish, a massive thank you to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you want to check out the benefits of becoming a Patreon, and then head over, there is a link in the description. You can see what's on offer for all the tier groups. Thank you so much once again to James Welch, Space for Terra, Cole, Tomorrow, Alexic, San, Retro Galaxy, Clone 13, Foozle CC, Space Spy, and Fam Fam for supporting my game dev journey. So I suppose I better show you exactly what we've made.
if you'd like to get involved in this I Remake Your Game devlog series, then you can reach out to me on Twitter, just DM me, and we can go from there. A massive thank you to Ghost Bit Studios for taking part in this challenge with me. It was great fun remaking your game, and I can't wait to see the devlog that you've made remaking one of my games. So there's a link in the description if you want to check that out. Go over, check out his channel and his itch page. And until the next time, have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.